uh, brief okay. reminder uh, that this evening's uh, presentation will be recorded uh, and we'll be able to post it into uh, to our virtual admissions presentation hub uh, for you guys to view. Um, and so we'll just give it another minute or so. I see that we have a, a pretty good crowd tonight uh, and I expect a, a possibly a few more to, to join in here momentarily. Yeah. Once again, I'm, my name is uh, Paul Sipper. I'm the director of admissions here uh, at St. Augustine High School. Um, and this is uh, week three of four for our admissions presentations. Give me a quick thumbs up if you guys can see my shared screen. It should say, it should be a picture of the school with our presentation title. Excellent. That means it's working. So we're in good shape there. Thank you. Um, and as I thought, we have a few more people joining us. So just give me a second here. And then we'll uh, we'll get going. And, and um, so very very briefly, those of you that are our first time attendees, and I see quite a few. Um, what we've been doing over the last couple of weeks is having an opportunity for us to uh, to, to meet and share and, and talk a little bit about some of our programs. Uh, we had the pleasure of hearing in week one from uh, our religion department chairperson, uh, Mrs. Cratchy, uh, and our assistant principal for academics, Mr. Hecht. Uh, we also um, had a, a, the, the pleasure of hearing uh, in week two, uh, we heard last week from our principal, Mr. Horn, who's here uh, again tonight. Uh, and we had the, the pleasure of hearing from our, our director of fun, uh, our ASB coordinator, uh, Mr. Osberg. And we talked a little bit about what makes Saints a little bit different than a lot of schools. Um, and if you didn't have a chance to, uh, to attend those meetings, I'll, I'll give you a, a, a quick way to, to figure that out and how you'll how you can actually see those uh, presentations um, in just a, a couple of minutes. So it looks like um, we're looks like we've got just about everyone uh, for now. I'll continue to admit those that show up. Um, again, thank you so much for being here. And just a, a very quick reminder again that we are uh, recording these uh, sessions. Um, you you will be able to see them, and we'll we'll place them online. So that's just a quick heads up for you. Uh, I'd like to turn it over very quickly to our principal, Mr. Horn. Uh, who will be leading us in our prayer this evening, and then we will uh, then we'll begin uh, with our presentations. Mr. Horn. Good evening, everybody, and welcome. We're really delighted to have you with us tonight. And I've chosen as a prayer, a prayer that's really common here at Saints. It's written by oh Father God. John Sanders, who was a principal here at the school. He was also a graduate from the class of 1966. Let's take a minute to quiet ourselves and uh, yes, we'll begin with this prayer. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. Loving Father, please guide my son to always do your best. Allow him to do what is really important and remind him how much I love him. Send good and wholesome friends into his life, keep him safe. Bless him with good health and give him the courage to do the right thing when difficult and tempting choices cross his path. Make my son strong in character, rich in sympathy, and generous in spirit. Bless him with a gentle nature and a kind heart. Let him become a man committed to the gospel of your son, Jesus. Grant him a lasting faith and lead him to a profound love for you, his family, and himself. Amen. St. Augustine, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Okay. Thank you so much for, for that. If you uh, have not uh, had a chance, I know we had a lot of people that joined us just in the last minute or so. Uh, if you've had a chance to, uh, to mute yourselves, that'd be fantastic. Um, during and throughout this meeting tonight, if you have any questions that pop up, please feel free to use the chat, the screen the chat box for us. Right. The chat box for us will give us an opportunity to respond as uh, we have several members of our administrative team here and, and faculty that can uh, can kind of uh, address those issues as we go. Uh, the format for the evening to, uh, this evening tonight, um, we will, uh, I'll, I'll basically kind of summarize a little bit of what's going to happen. We're going to talk a little bit about our math program tonight. We're going to talk a little bit about our science program. Uh, and then we're going to have the opportunity again uh, to hear from um, our, our director of finance, Mr. Uh, Kevin DeRue, uh, to talk a little bit about uh, financial aid. So again, please, if, uh, if uh, you can, can remain muted, and then at the end, we'll have an opportunity for ourselves to, uh, to actually uh, uh, ask questions live, if you'd like. 
and we'll kind of go from there. So um, I'm gonna show, so you should see my screen again. Um, essentially what, what we've done over the last couple of weeks is, um, is share with you uh, a little bit of our story. I mentioned it just a, a, a few minutes ago. If you missed any of the first two presentations, we ha now have our virtual admissions presentation oh, so hub available um, on our website. Uh, and it's very easy to get to. It's just sahs.org and click on admissions. Um, and you will find um, it very nice, kind of uh, one-stop shop for each of our weeks. And uh, at some point, the week three presentations will, uh, will, will pop up there as well, hopefully in the next few days. Um, we are excited to be able to, to, to see everyone here tonight. It's a pretty busy evening, I'm sure. Uh, so we definitely thank you guys for taking time out of your lives, um, probably shuttling uh, uh, basketball and soccer practices and maybe some baseball and, and volleyball there as well, or some music lessons. Uh, so we, we definitely um, appreciate you spending a little bit of time with us tonight. Uh, and over the course of the next uh, 45 minutes to an hour, uh, we, we really hope to, to provide a little bit more insight into some of the specifics of our programs uh, and, and offer you guys a, an even greater uh, chance to, to begin the process of exploring who we, who we are and what we are. Um, again, we're located in North Park. I know a lot of you guys have already signed up for, for tours. That's fantastic. Uh, we still are offering tours, so you feel free to shoot me an email. Um, my face is all over the website and uh, all over the admissions portion as well. So if you uh, don't remember my name or, or can't remember my email address, it's, uh, it's very easy to, uh, to find me once you're on our, our, our website. Um, I, I, I definitely uh, want you guys to know um, that when we, um, when we recorded these Zooms, we're, first of all, this is not our expertise. We love hosting in-person events. Our open houses and our shadow uh, days for our students have been uh, sort of a hallmark of our program for such a long time uh, that obviously COVID's thrown us for a pretty major loop. I've, I've kind of given that uh, that fair warning from uh, from day one and week one when we started this. Uh, this is not our natural environment, so we feel like a little bit of a fish out of water sometimes. Uh, but for us, we've done the best we can to provide and, and give you the opportunity in the forum to have questions answered uh, and and for for you to hear a little bit about our program. Um, as, as, as uh, I was going to say, as long as uh, you kind of uh, are, are navigating our website and once you get to that admissions hub, um, you'll see several links. There's going to be a, a video link which will bring you to a YouTube um, presentation. Uh, and then you'll actually see a PDF link as well uh, that will show you sort of up close some of the materials that our presenters have shared uh, during their presentations. Uh, so it should give you a little bit of an idea uh, about what the topics were and you can kind of uh, peruse them at your own uh, at your own leisure, so to speak. Uh, so now I'm going to go ahead and, and share with you. Uh, uh, I have my screen shared and, and just re remind you that this is week three of four. Uh, next week, we'll be really excited to share with you uh, some of the more, uh, I think, exciting programs that uh, that make Saints a little bit different. Um, our, our campus ministry program, uh, Mrs. Yoakum will be joining us next week to talk about campus ministry, a little bit of Christian service. We'll hear from our department chair, uh, Mrs. Drummy, and several of, uh, several members of her department. We'll talk about our visual and performing arts, oftentimes referred to as VAPA around here. Uh, and then um, you'll also have the opportunity to hear from several coaches um, and our athletic director and principal for assistant principal for auxiliary services, Coach Hopp, will be joining us as well uh, to share a little bit more and deeper insight into our athletic program and, and our philosophy. And so to kind of give you guys a little bit of an insight and a little bit of an idea of what you're going to hear about next week. I have a, a couple of very short videos, about a minute each, uh, that I'd like to share with you. Uh, and then we will uh, we'll start our, our evening. Let me go ahead and get this situated. I see people are still showing up, so that's awesome. So let me go ahead and stop my share just very briefly. And then I will hop on over here. And you should hear, give me a quick thumbs up now if you can see our St. Augustine High School logo. Perfect. All right. Hopefully you guys enjoy. They're very brief. I think that teaching arts to boys is a big deal. The way I conduct my classes, I make sure that there's lots of room for movement, try to make sure that instead of just showing techniques for drawing and painting that we're also learning 
about how to express ourselves and how to understand emotions that are going on inside of us. And I think that that might be something that's been overlooked in the past with boys' education, but it's certainly something that we're doing here. We're trying to produce well-rounded men here, and it doesn't come from just getting good grades. It doesn't come from just being on a sports team. I think it comes from finding interests that they can take on lifelong. All right, so to hear a little bit more about that uh, next time is going to be uh, pretty interesting. We're going to have uh, our, our drama director will join us. We'll have um, a little bit of a, of a presentation, probably virtually on, on music. Uh, and then we'll also hear from, uh, from Mrs. Drummy to talk about our, uh, our visual arts as well. Um, again, I'm gonna share my screen one last time for a very brief one minute long deal. This is our assistant principal for auxiliary services, Coach Hot. Really when you think about young men and extracurriculars, the importance is honestly just part of the physical aspect of it, just making sure that they get some of that energy out. We have football and cross country in the fall. We've just recently added boys beach volleyball, so that's a new sport to our school, which we're excited about. Uh, in the winter, we have the best sport in the world, which is basketball. We have soccer, rugby, wrestling, and surfing. Those are all winter sports for us. And then in the spring, we have baseball, volleyball, swimming, tennis, golf, track, and lacrosse. Even more important than the winning and losing is learning that life is about competition. When you're looking for a job, when you're trying to get a new sale, whatever that might be. And those are things that they can learn at a young age here playing sports for us that, you know, how, how do you compete? What is the commitment level that's needed to do that well? And I think that's a huge part of being a part of our sports teams. So hopefully you'll join us next week to hear a little bit more from our coaches, hear a little bit more about um, the, the programs that we have, and uh, we're excited to have you guys. Um, so with that being said, there are uh, several of, of our, our teachers here tonight. Uh, we have um, Mr. Freestone, who's in our science department, uh, uh, Coach Walp, who's also the science department chairperson. Uh, we have with us Mr. Horn, our principal, Mr. Uh, Mr. Hopped, our assistant principal for auxiliary services, also our head basketball coach. Uh, we have uh, Mr. Hector, our assistant principal for, uh, for academics. Uh, we have Mr. Tom Isaac, who's listed at currently as Wanda Singh on, the, on your screens. Uh, that's, that's Mr. Isaac here. He's in our math department. Uh, and then there's myself as well, uh, that, that uh, uh, all of us can, can, can begin the process of answering your questions. And then later tonight, you're going to hear from, uh, from Mr. Popular. That's our director of finance. Uh, that'll be uh, Kevin Deru uh, kind of guiding you through some of the, the key questions about financing uh, and financial aid um, on our campus. Uh, so um, I would like to turn the, the turn it over now. I see a few more people have joined us. Um, I would like to turn it over now to uh, to uh, Mrs. Katie Walp, uh, our, our head swim coach, direct, di uh, department chair for science. Um, and uh, she'll be sharing a little bit of our, our science uh, department, our philosophy, some of our classes. Uh, and then you'll hear from Mr. Freestone with an exciting new program that our school is offering. Uh, thank you very much. Hi, everyone. I'm just going to go ahead and um, share my screen and get my PowerPoint going. Awesome. Are we good, Mr. Sipper? We can hear me. We can see me. Perfect. Hi, everyone. My name is Katie Wolf. I am the science department chairperson. Um, I also teach chemistry and AP chemistry. So the Saints department contains a variety of classes for students to choose from. As a department, we approach science in a boy friendly manner. Uh, we know that our students are best engaged with busy hands. So we make sure that we can get them hands on and working as often as possible. Um, we have a dynamic classroom um, where our comprehensive science curriculum, along with our extensive hands-on learning, provides our boys with a solid foundation for college and an invaluable problem-solving skill that will help them excel in both academia and our ever-changing world. 
Um, the ever-changing world has been on part of our verbiage for years, and I just don't think could be more relevant than now. Um, on campus, we have five science classrooms, including three wet labs, which just means that they have gas, water, electricity, um, and as well as our maker space, which is brand new to our school this year. Um, it's pictured in the upper right and the lower left corners. At Staines, we have nine different science courses for the boys to choose from. Depending on their interests, Saints requires two years of science courses, but three are recommended um, if they would like to go on to the UCs. All of these courses fulfill the lab sciences UC requirement. So they all have a lab component associated with them. It's really nice that we can offer a variety of courses because the boys can choose based on really what they're interested in. These are our AP courses that we currently offer. The prerequisites for those courses are listed below them in gray. If students um, achieve a qualifying score in these courses, they can earn <laughs> college credits for, these, um, for the courses that they enroll in. Hey. Hey, how are you? So course sequence. Oh, my goodness, how are you? It can be really different. Um, all freshmen can take physical science their freshman year. If they earn a 95 or higher on the HSPT, they can choose biology. If they go the physical science route, they can take biology their sophomore year or even during the summer. And then after that, it's a really chooser and adventure. You can go chemistry, you can go physics, you can go environmental based on your math and some other prerequisites. And again, what the boys are interested in. If you go the biology route, Typically, they'll take chemistry next, um, but not necessarily always. Again, based on their math and their interests, it's, it's really, there's so many different options, which is really cool. So science during intercession, I'm, if you haven't been introduced to intercession before, intercession is this really amazing opportunity that the boys have in between first and second semester. It's about a month long. Um, they can take marine biology, robotics, or engineering design. Um, I teach marine biology, so I'm a little bit uh, biased that that class is the best one. Uh, we actually get the boys scuba certified, and then we spend the rest of the month learning in the field. So basically, we just go on field trips every day. We go to the aquarium. We were able last year to go to UCSD and look at their research aquarium and talk to the postgrads. Um, so it's a really great class. It's a really unique opportunity. At the end of the day, the kids go away patty certified. Hey, Paul, I think you muted, muted Kate. You oh, muted me. I'm there back. we go. I'll go there back. we go. You're back. Okay, cool. So we also offer summer school. Um, which is another way for the students to get ahead. Um, we have physical science, biology, and chemistry that the students can complete in six weeks, um, but it does cover the whole um, year-long course that would happen during regular um, chemistry. Why is it for me? I just wanted to go back really quick. So, I just wanted to point out in this slide, the photo in the lower left, that's actually from today. Um, that's the lab that we completed in my classroom today. So masks and physical distancing um, definitely creates a different lab experience, but it's just an experience that our boys are still um, having and being able to um, learn in that way and learn the equipment in order to prepare themselves for labs in college. So I just wanted to go back and share that really quick. So now I'll go ahead and put up my info one more time. That's my info. If anybody would like to email me any specific questions or at any time reach out. Um, now I'll go ahead and let Mr. Freestone elaborate on our new introduction to engineering class that he's teaching and the new makerspace that he's creating. 
Hello, everybody. Um, thank you, Katie. And uh, thank you, everybody, for uh, being here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Uh, if I could get a quick thumbs up, uh, if this looks solid to everybody. All right, righteous. OK, so like Katie said, um, I am the uh, engineering uh, teacher. So it's my job to kind of bring the engineering room to its um, to its uh, to its um, successful useful ship, I should say. Um, the three things that the engineering room kind of focuses on, and this was this was tough for me in the beginning because there's so much that you know can be done with all the tools that are in here, but really it, it divides up into about uh, three deals, right? First and foremost, it helps me teach the uh, introduction to the uh, uh, introduction to engineering class, which is a collaboration between us at Saints and uh, the University of Texas. Uh, second, it is a fully functioning makerspace. Um, and then third, it is actually facilitating um, a group of students who want to really take this, uh, you know, to its um, um, kind of utilize all of the tools uh, to their maximum potential. Uh, so first, I'll go over the introduction to engineering class. Um, so as I said, it's a collaboration between us and the University of Texas. And it's it's a really incredible class. Um, because it um, um, because it teaches good uh, engineering habits through project-based learning, and um, the um, kind of the, the the neat deal about that, right, is um, there's not too many classes that are uh, that are like this, right? Um, I like to tell students that really the course itself. Um, there's no homework, there's no tests, there's no nothing. So they learn everything through trial and error um, and also hands-on prize, right? So for example, a big one is if you look in the top right here, um, these are our two pinhole cameras and the students were given criteria to say, okay, well, we have a user that has um, limited motion in their hands, right? So we need to create a pinhole camera for them to use and my job is teaching them, okay, this is the math that goes behind um, a pinhole camera. And invariably, as you know, any of you guys who are engineers know, um, as a new engineer, um, you typically want to do everything theoretically. And then at the very end, you make your product and you expect it to work perfectly. So one of the lessons was you know, to try to get them to think of, oh, I need to start testing early. And that's not done by saying, hey, everybody, um, we have three weeks to complete the project, make sure you test early because they're obviously not going to do it. So what ended up happening was we go two weeks in and I tell them, all right, everybody, um, you know, we've been talking about this project is due today. They're, of course, you know, freaking out because, of course, they're pro they've spent all this time theoretically designing something. And when it gets time to use it, you know, their pictures aren't coming out right. You know, maybe there's light leakage happening. Um, it's hard to load. And so the lesson is then taught by saying, hey, surprise, what would you like to have? Oh, more testing, great, surprise, surprise, we have a whole week left to test. And so that kind of ingrains in them um, this lesson that you know, I myself going to engineering school, I only learned that when I was part of an engineering club way further on, right? Now they also learn, right, how to design things for the end user in mind. Um, we have a decision-making process for how to, how to pick which design we pursue, and of course, by using the tools in the manufacturing lab, um, they of course have to make their design manufacturable, which is you know a big deal that uh, typically you don't learn um, um, until you actually start creating something. So in addition to learning through hands-on experience, we're also gonna be giving the students the opportunity to at a minimum have a basic understanding of uh, CAD software. And for those of you who aren't familiar, CAD software is if you want to create uh, something in virtual space, you of course need to model it first and then you can create drawings. And so SolidWorks is one of the um, probably big two or three companies. And so we've gotten uh, licenses through them. So your students will be able to um, have their own license um, to use on their own machine and learn through the built-in tutorials in this program, which is an incredible opportunity. Um, and for those of them who really latch onto it, um, they will actually have the opportunity to become uh, CW, CSWA uh, certified. And that is a certification through SolidWorks that they can present to a college, they can present it to 
um, any company that they work for and just say, hey, I'm officially a good CAD user and I, I know what I'm doing. So that I'm very excited for that. Um, and finally, this process being a partnership between us and the University of Texas, um, there is the opportunity for students to do what's called a dual enrollment, um, where they can apply to be part of this intro to engineering program like it was a college course. And so they can apply free of charge, they send in their work so far, and then the college decides, okay, this guy's on the right track, we're gonna, we're gonna work with him to see if he can earn um, a three credit hour um, um, credit towards his education. And if you qualify, then you pay $300 and you can get a pass fail credit, which is pretty neat because that's about 25% of the cost that it would cost um, if they took this class in college itself. So all these things, awesome opportunity for, uh, for the kids to, um, to learn about engineering hands-on. But then as a separate deal, right? This room kind of functions as a full fully functioning maker space, right? So any student anywhere, even if they're not in the engineering class, can have an idea in their head, come into the room and say, okay, I'm going to bring this thing to life, which, you know, really, that's a special opportunity that, um, I mean, if I had that when I was here in, in high school, that would have been, that would have been incredible. So this is, I'm pumped about this. Um, of course, they're going to have to have certifications to use, you know, the different tools. It's almost like you upgrade, right? Um, the tools that we've got available, this isn't exactly the most exciting set, right? But anybody, anywhere, right? You can use the tools um, that you would be able to use at home. Anybody with like, um, you know, a quick project, right? It's like, oh, I need to come in, use a saw, fine, no problem, right? Now, you didn't come here to see the regular old tools that you found in your garage. Um, so once they get what's called the yellow card certification, meaning that I can trust them to use the relatively more big boy tools right, they'll have access to um, kind of the drill press, the belt sander, and the bandsaw. And so this is really going to open up, I think, a lot of doors um, for students and also the engineering guys um, to really bring a lot of their ideas that they have um, quickly um, into like a prototyping phase. And we also have two 3D printers, which again, you know, I don't know, I, I, that is so incredible that you can have two 3D printers at a school and have a kid walk in and be like, hey, I got this file, I'd like to print it. You may be at home, have a, have a thing that you want your kid to print and say, hey, take this to school, plug it in, print this, bring it back tomorrow, primo. Um, you might be wondering, what could be better than this? I will tell you. If you ever told me that you could have a CNC mill at a high school, I would not have believed you. But um, thanks to Mr. DeRue for finding the budget um, for this. We're actually going to have a um, fully functioning miniature mill that a student can take, um, that a student can take any block of aluminum, plastic, wood, right, put it in here and get their part out. And if you're not familiar with what a, um, with what a CNC is, um, imagine that it's the opposite of a 3D printer, right? So you give it material you give it a model, it comes in and automatically cuts um, all of the material away, revealing kind of what's inside. And for those of you who are familiar with this, it has built-in software that is almost in between somebody who doesn't know anything about CAM software and, you know, somebody who's like, okay, I know the speeds, the feeds, all this stuff. The students just have to learn to say, I'm cutting this material. I wanna make this shape, I'm using this tool. And the program itself will tell them, you're gonna to need to cut at this RPM, we're gonna take this depth of cut, and they're gonna start internalizing that, which will help them a ton when they get to engineering school and they have to maybe manufacture some of this stuff themselves. So very exciting stuff. Um, and then lastly, um, we do have the engineering club where um, this is kind of a space where the students can learn to work as a team to kind of go towards a, um, uh, a common focused goal. And this will be great practice for them if they wanna go to college and do like formula SAE, if they wanna do um, concrete canoe, any sort of engineering club where they're gonna have to say, hey, I know what I'm doing, please let me be part of the team um, so that I can hands-on learn. Um, this, is a, this is a wonderful opportunity for them to do that. And our first project is gonna be uh, battle bots. So potentially by the time um, your student gets here, we'll have that uh, fully fledged. So 
Very exciting stuff. Uh, thank you very much for your time. I'll take away my screen now um, and hand it off to whoever is next. Thank you very much. All right, thank you so much, Chris. I'm gonna turn it over to Mr. Heck just um, to kind of summarize just a few little points uh, that uh, you may have missed um, in his presentation that pertains specifically to science. Uh, and then we'll move on over to uh, to Mr. Isaac in just a second for algebra. Mr. Heck, are you still there? Excellent, yes, Paul, I am, can you hear me? Great. Um, yeah, I just wanna take a moment to, well, first welcome everybody again. Uh, those of you that I haven't met on Zoom or in person, uh, my name is Mr. Hecht. I'm the uh, assistant principal for academics here at the Saints. And, and I'm just so excited to have this discussion tonight because we could not be more excited about the future uh, for our science program here at San Augustine High School. You heard from Mr. Freestone, you heard Ms., Mrs. Wall talk about all the programmatic aspects of what we're doing here with science. But the feeling of just walking around, and this is kind of what Mr. Sipper was talking about, you know, you take a look at some of those pictures just a moment inside one of our classrooms like today, when you see these kids doing what they're doing, uh, not only is it cutting edge, but the engagement is really stunning. And it's really exciting stuff to see where our students are going to go. The skill sets that they're now gonna have, not only with the opportunity for dual enrollment, you talk about CAD certification, which is really unheard of uh, at the high school level. So we're, the, the avenues are just, exploding for our students and our graduates here. So we're very excited about that. I do wanna take a moment to underscore what Mrs. Walt mentioned in her presentation. And that is really the University of California approval process for science. We've worked diligently over the last several years, uh, all of us in concert with one another uh, to make sure that our lab sciences uh, were all UC approved. You talk about our engineering course, you talk about our robotics courses. Many schools uh, in San Diego, California might have a variation of those two courses, but very, very few uh, have gone through the process to get those certified as UC lab sciences. Oftentimes they're offered in the G elective areas, um, but our students, and I say this quite often, um, these classes are so fun, they're so engaging. It's like getting your kids to eat vegetables, right? How do you get them to do it without knowing that they're eating vegetables? And this is amazing. Our students here at Saints can get really up to five years of science. So for the kids that are interested in schools like you know, UCLA and Berkeley and Michigan and University of Texas and Notre Dame, and you start talking about some of these schools, these high profile schools with engineering, science and STEM programs, our kids are really at the forefront. And, and uh, we're very, very uh, pleased with where things are. And we're excited for the future, especially for potential saints from out there, if you're listening, um, the avenues that will be available to you at St. Augustine High School in the areas of science, uh, really remarkable. So all of our courses in science are UC approved as uh, lab sciences, and that really is important to us. So um, hopefully you understand the distinction between an elective and, and uh, a lab science approval. And that comes into play when your son uh, applies to college, particularly the University of California system, you have to have so many lab sciences uh, to be eligible and then beyond that to be competitive at certain schools. So um, just wanted to raise that distinction for everybody there. So you had a you know, understanding of kind of how that goes. And just in case you haven't had a son or daughter apply to a University of California school. Mr. Sipper, thank you very much for the opportunity. It's uh, my pleasure now to introduce Mr. Tom Isaac. And so Mr. Isaac is going to kind of take us through the um, placement issues in mathematics and kind of our philosophy behind math here at San Diego High School. Yeah, Paul, can you hear me okay? Okay, I'm sorry for my name on here. It's uh, had a little glitch at the house, so I'm going through my wife's account. My name is Tom Isaac. This is my 19th year at St. Augustine High School, all in the math department. I'm also the golf coach. Uh, before I get into the math program a little bit, I would like to make a comment about Mr. Freestone um, that speaks to what Saints is, is really how, how meaningful Saints is to people. Uh, I had the pleasure of getting to teach Mr. Freestone twice. I taught him in algebra and algebra two. And then we, he went off to college, but then he's an engineer. And a couple of years ago, he got in touch with me and just said that his engineering career wasn't quite what he expected and how much he was loving teaching kids in uh, rock climbing. And so he wanted to know about getting back to saints and teaching. And so I'm just really proud to have Chris here. He brings a lot of energy. He brings a lot of, um, you know, current, current knowledge about engineering. So our, we couldn't have had a more perfect pairing with the new engineering program that we have. 
Um, and I think it needs to be pointed out at Saints how many of our teachers did go to Saints and what that says about how much they love the experience and want to be a part of it. And that's part of the reason why through the years it's been such a consistent experience is because someone like myself who didn't graduate from Saints uh, we learn from the people who are teachers here what the Saints experience is, and it really stays consistent throughout the years, so much that someone like Mr. Freestone, and we have a new teacher this year, Mr. Weeby, uh, who I also taught in math, who is one of my tutors, uh, they want to come back and teach at Saints. So uh, sorry for the little detour, but just wanted to kind of explain what, what way you can see that Saints is special when we have so many teachers on uh, campus who were here. So let me get back into what I was here for. Um, I'm going to talk to you a little bit tonight about what our math program is like, how students get placed, as well as just some personal observations from 19 years of teaching here. So Saints is more of a traditional math program in that we don't do integrated math. We start at uh, the, our levels of math starting at the lowest level would be pre-algebra, algebra one, geometry, followed by algebra two, honors pre-calculus or pre-calculus, depending on your grades up until that point. And then we do offer AP calculus and we, um, we have let's see, statistics and AP statistics as well. So depending on you know, the first couple of years, pretty much everybody will be taking algebra and geometry. And then from there, it just depends on what, what students are planning on doing when they head into college, whether they take calculus, pre-calculus or maybe statistics. Um, you know, as I've done this 19 years, I can tell you that one of the hardest things, I mean, one of the things we put the most time into as a math department is making sure that incoming ninth graders get placed into the proper class. It is a really tricky thing on everybody's uh, side because we have, if you think about how many different feeder schools we have, whether they're parochial, public schools, um, other private schools that aren't parochial, and we're trying to take everyone in at the same time as ninth graders when transcripts are saying different things to us that are hard to read. So one of the things that we put the most time into whenever we do self-evaluation of our math department is, does the system that we have place students in the proper class? So that, again, we want things to be challenging, but not overwhelming. We want students to have to learn new material, but I've been on the end of this long enough where you see students who get placed into a math class that they really don't have a mastery of all the important concepts before that. And it ends up being a case where students really struggle in math for four years. So our goal is to make sure that whatever math class students start in, they're ready to, to do well in that class. So they really enjoy math and, and are successful for four years. Because our end goal is that four years later, we like to see that as a student body, our students are doing better in math as a group than they were when they came in. Because that means each individual student is really reaching the best that they can. Um, our, our placement process starts with the high school placement test. We have added some math questions to that by Saints alone that are meant to kind of see if students are really um, have a solid mastery of pre-algebra concepts as well as the high school placement test. Uh, then in the springtime, we offer a secondary math test for students who might want to uh, skip algebra here at Saints and begin in geometry. And really what that springtime test is, is it's our algebra one end of the year final exam. And students have to score at least, I believe Mr. Heck can correct me this, I believe it's 85% on the springtime test to be placed directly into geometry. That is correct, yes. So students can students are allowed to take that test. And like I said, it's a, I would just say it's our end of the year algebra one test without tricks on there. I, I was a big part of making that test up and it's not meant to really try to trick people, but it's just what we would consider the fundamentals of Algebra 1, so that we know that if a student is going to skip Algebra 1 at Saints, that by the time they get into Geometry, and especially Algebra 2, we don't want a student who skipped our Algebra to all of a sudden realize, wow, I didn't have all the core concepts that I needed. Um, as a result of that, whether for whatever reason, over the 19 years I've been here, we do have more students now starting in pre-Algebra than Algebra 1. Uh, relative to 19 years ago. We still have more students starting Algebra 1, but and I guess our message is we want to make sure that students are going to get the fundamentals really mastered because that's going to mean four years of success at Saints. And uh, there's a lot of ways for students to move up. You know, I mentioned we have, not only do we have AP Calculus, we have AB and BC for students. 
and we encourage students, like for example, my students right now, I'm already talking to them about if they're doing well, what can you do to move ahead a track? Because we offer summer school uh, to move ahead a, a, a year in math. So we wanna place students in the right place, but we definitely let students run as far forward as possible once they show that they're ready for it and that they like math. Um, but those are my main things other than I know uh, one of our big programs here that doesn't come directly into the math department curriculum I am, I've offered a class, I offer a program called the Math Peer Tutoring Program, and I've got to give Mr. Horns here online, I've got to give him credit for this because I remember 18 years ago when we started together, I was getting a bunch of students coming in asking for math help, and just as one teacher, I could only do so much, and he talked to me and said, well, what if we, what if we're able to get some of our top students to come in and serve as peer tutors, and I honestly was a little skeptical that we could get our students to do that, but um, as any of, anyone who's been in my class before school can tell you, in my classroom every day before school, I have eight tutors from uh, anywhere from some freshmen who are in the honors program up to seniors who are in uh, AP calculus, and they come in just to help students one-on-one -on -one work on math problems. And what this has really done is it's kind of what happens in college where students sit down one-on-one -on -one with someone near their age, and they work on a problem together to really help learn it. Um, it's a really great program for both ends. So for students who are struggling with math or just want a little bit of help, there's someone to help them. But for top students, what the top students find out is that having to explain a problem in more than one way really makes them a better student. And like I mentioned, Mr. Wiebe, who's now part of our math department, really got a love for teaching math because he was in my morning tutoring program as a tutor. And once he let, when he's the same thing, he's an engineering major and math major. And he just decided he wanted to become a teacher because of that morning tutoring. So we have a challenging math uh, curriculum, but we do have a lot of programs so that students can keep up and accelerate as they, as they wish to. That's great. Yeah, um, Tom, if I might, and I really want to uh, thank Tom for kind of articulating the message from the math department. And, and Mr. Sipper, if it's okay, I'm gonna take a moment here just to kind of kind of highlight a few things and kind of pop those things out before I throw it back to you. Is that okay? We're all good there. Perfect. Um, I, 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 I just can't underscore enough for everyone listening out there. I, I do know because I generally get a lot of these phone calls, the concern and perhaps just quite candidly, the angst about mathematics and placement. And to keep in mind that from our perspective here at Saints, the most important thing we, thing we can do for your son, uh, it, three words, get it right. And I can't underscore that enough as we look towards the back end. And I'd encourage all of you out there, if you could talk to, as Mr. Isaac alluded to, the students that have not only gone through his class, but our math curriculum here at Saints, what's so important to understand for the messaging for us out to the parents is we spend a lot of time articulating with colleges and universities about what they see when our students get there. And so the students that go before come back year in, year out and let us know. We're dialoguing with our graduates. We're also dialoguing with the universities uh, where these students are attending. And year in and year out, what they tell us is whatever you're doing at Saints, keep doing it. And the message back to them is making sure we get it right. And that means if we have to slow it down a little bit, if you come from a situation where perhaps they called it algebra in seventh and eighth grade, but it might not have been the complete package. It's not a criticism of that institution or teacher per se. It's just making sure that we're doing our job with your son to prepare them for advanced mathematics. So they are ready when they get to college. Algebra fundamentally, is everything, it's the bedrock for when you get to a calculus or A, B or B, C, those types of classes. And we'd be doing a gross disservice to our students if we didn't fundamentally take the time to get it right. I'll say it again, it is really important. That being said, as Mr. Isaac talked about, if, if you are out there and you have a love and a passion for mathematics, it comes easy to you, you can demonstrate that proficiency at 85% or higher, then by all means, uh, we want to make sure that you are in the correct math placement for your aptitude when you get to Saints. Then we will take over and help you grow those aptitudes and abilities in mathematics such that you can be wildly successful, even if you're not inclined to mathematics right now, even if you have that anxiety to math. The number of stories that we hear year in, year out about our, from our seniors and they look back on their freshman year and go, oh, I was a little concerned because my friend was in this class and I was in this class, but 
my goodness, look at where I'm in now. Finishing with honors pre-calculus. I'm on my way to Stanford University. I'm going to Villanova. And all of these things fundamentally happen at the freshman level. So we want to keep that long view in mind. Okay, that's really, really important with math. A couple other things we will take a look. Uh, Mr. Isaac alluded to the placement test in May. Obviously, we want to take a look at how you do on the HSPT. And we have a math supplement that we started administering. 25 question, 30 minute uh, math supplement that goes along with the HSPT on testing day. So you can anticipate that when you get here. We use all of those instruments uh, come to bear to place you in the correct math course here at St. Augustine High School. It's really, really important to us. Um, one thing else I think is pretty exciting. Last year, um, we go back to our University of California approved courses. We offer an AP computer science class and that now got moved into our mathematics approval uh, for the University of California. So there again, it's conceivable that you could wind up taking five years in essence of, uh, of a math, math here at Saints if you're so inclined and really wanna move in that direction. So everything from pre-algebra to AP computer science, A, calculus, A, B, and B, C. So we have that spectrum, but again, want the takeaway, it's to sound, uh, you know, don't wanna sound like a broken record, but we do wanna get it right. It's that important to us and we feel it's that important to your son to get it right. Mr. Sipper, thank you. Hey, Paul, 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 could I add one other thing in there? I'm sorry, Paul, can, is that okay? Yes, absolutely. Okay, so I did see a, a, a good, good question came up on the uh, chat group as far as someone who's taken integrated math from the public schools or from some other school, where they would get placed into. Again, that's going to be totally placed on ba uh, based on how they do on the high school placement test. So we've had students who've taken the integrated who start directly in geometry, and we've had others who start in algebra or even pre-algebra because it really comes down to what their what the mastery level of the student is, not what class they took before. We just want to make sure that whatever class they're in that they're ready to succeed in there. So two students could take the same class before they came to Saints. But the student who understands it better is probably going to do much better on our placement test, and as a result, they'll start at a higher level. So we don't really have we don't have any kind of a set thing. Like we have a lot of students who, on their transcript, have had algebra before. But I would use Miss Walt from the science department as a kind of an example here. I think she would agree that a, our chemistry class at Saints is excellent. But to say that if you've had a high school chemistry class, it's the same as a UCSD advanced chemistry class. It's not the same thing, right? There's different levels and it's the same with algebra. When we're looking and we're trying to decide on students for if their transcript says algebra, we don't always know if what we cover is 12 chapters at Saints, if every school who's had algebra is covering the same material. So we don't know always which schools have done which material. So we leave that up to it, how ready the students are when they, when they come here to Saints as an incoming ninth grader. Um, and I do have one last thing. Uh, for families who might have their kids in integrated math right now, or who, because of the Zoom and because there's not in person, if you're kind of worried about the, where your sons are in math right now, um, there's a really good program that we use at our school called Alex. And it's a really nice program where you can do it from the house and you can actually choose the classic, classic algebra one so that students could really get ready for the placement test in the spring, as well as to be ready for what we expect here at Saints. So I know that right now this year with, with online classes, not every math class everywhere is the same anymore. So it's just an option out there that you can supplement on the side with what students are doing at their house right now to, to be more prepared. Thanks, thanks Mr. Sipper. Uh, thank you, Mr. Isaac, I appreciate that.